Anna hated the late night shift at the movie store. Empty store, fluorescent lights buzzing, shadows stretching from aisles like grasping hands. Outside small town America, everything is closed, and everyone is asleep except Anna. Everything about this night felt off to Anna. A tingling on her skin, maybe it was the storm clouds brewing outside resulting in an even darker night with the occasional flash of lightning. Maybe it was the silence that was causing such an eerie feeling. The usual cricket noises were not audible. There was no distant traffic, just the air conditioner's hum battling the muggy air. Each car passing sent shivers down her spine. Headlights swept across the shelves in the store, momentarily illuminating dust floating in the air. She glanced at the clock, seeing it was finally 10 o'clock, closing time. She flipped the sign to closed and then turned to get the key to lock up. Just 10 more minutes, she whispered to the cardboard cutout of a grinning superhero behind the counter. Suddenly there was a rattle at the door. Looking back at the door, there were two men. Their faces were obscured by hoodies. They stepped into the store and Anna's breath hitched. She only then recognized who they were. They were regulars. They came in every Tuesday just before closing, always paid in cash, always lingered a little too long, eyes scanning the store, not the movies. Evening, one mumbled. His voice was as rough as gravel. They shuffled down the new releases aisle, Anna pretended to organize DVDs keeping them in her peripheral vision. Every Tuesday the same unease. Tonight it clawed, sharp and cold. She gripped the counter, knuckles bone white. Their voices, hushed and low, carried across the empty store. A chill, despite the heat, snaked down her spine. She snuck a glance at the clock. Two minutes past ten. Two minutes. They always left right at 10.04. Always. Her gaze darted between the clock and the shadowy figures by the horror movies. It was now 10.04, and the men were still there, browsing, or so they pretended. Anna's pulse quickened, her hand instinctively went to the phone, fingers hovering over the speed dial for the police. Just then, a glint of metal caught her eye. A badge, partially hidden beneath the hoodie of the taller man. He caught her looking, gave a barely perceptible nod. Relief washed over her. They weren't regulars, they were undercover. All those Tuesdays, the late nights, the unsettling feeling of being watched. It all made sense now. They had been watching someone, someone who frequented the store on Tuesday nights. She wanted to laugh, or maybe even cry in relief. She managed a small tight smile at the men. They had been her silent protectors all along. The phone rang, shattering the fragile piece. Anna jumped, heart leaping into her throat. She snatched the receiver, her voice breathless. Hello, Anna? A woman's voice. It was Mrs. Johnson from across the street. Sorry to bother you, dear. But have you seen Fluffy? He got out about an hour ago and... Anna tuned out Mrs. Peterson's rambling. Her gaze was fixed on the men. The taller one was talking on a radio, his voice low and urgent. The other man was watching her, his expression unreadable. Found him lurking around the video store last week. Mrs. Peterson continued, oblivious that she had been ignoring what she was saying. You know how cats are, always curious. I wouldn't want him bothering you. Anna's blood ran cold. The pieces clicked into place. The undercover men weren't there for a suspect. They were there for something else entirely, something far more terrifying. The taller man clicked off the radio and turned to her, a grim smile on his face. He nodded towards the back of the store. We got him, ma'am. He was hiding behind the horror movies. He held up a small furry animal, fluffy. The cat looked unconcerned, even bored as the officer gently deposited him into a pet carrier. Anna could only stare, her relief tinged with a healthy dose of embarrassment. Sorry for the scare, ma'am, the other officer said, his tone apologetic. We've been tracking this little guy for days, he's quite the escape artist. Anna managed a weak laugh. I'll say. They left then, taking Fluffy and her fear with them. She locked the door behind them, the familiar click sounding louder than usual in the sudden silence. She leaned against the counter, heart still pounding. The thunderstorm outside, as if it was a scene from a movie or show, had broken. Rain started pelting against the windows, mirroring the turmoil that still churned within her. She had been so sure, so certain that she was in danger, and she had been right in a way, just not the way she had imagined. Closing up, she kept glancing at the door, half expecting another visitor, another reason to be afraid. The night, once so ordinary, was now etched with the unsettling memory of her irrational fear, the chilling realization of her own vulnerability. 
Driving home, streetlights casting long shadows, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. She knew it was just her nerves, the residue of a long, strange night. But still, she couldn't help but check the rearview mirror just to be sure. The road stretched ahead, dark and unfamiliar. In her rearview mirror, she could see a car in the distance with its headlights turned off. They made every turn she did, and they stayed back quite a ways as if they were trying to not be noticed.